A very good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the Spoken Tutorial Project IIT Bombay, we welcome uh, you all for this uh, talk. Uh, I request uh, uh, Professor Chakravarti to formally introduce the guest to all of you. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I am uh, uh, Chakravarti. I teach at the uh, School of Design uh, at IIT Bombay. And uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Dr. Kadar Wali, especially because last four months I've been actually on the millet diet. So I've like, you know, I said I, I know, I get this sort of you know, chance to introduce him. Dr. Kadar Wali was born in Prudutur uh, town, Kadapa district, Andhra Pradesh. I also hail from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, he, and he's now settled in Mysore for the last 23 years. He has been working relentlessly in reviving Siri Dhanya, also known as positive millets, for nearly 20 years. After having completed a master's in science with a specialization in education from the Regional Institute of Education, Mysuru, he went to get his PhD from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, uh, for his work involving steroids. He married his classmate Usha. He pursued his postdoctoral research fellowship in environmental science from Oregon in the USA. His research involved deactivating deadly chemical substances such as dioxin, uh, for example, at a time when food was being rapidly commercialized. After completing his postdoctoral research at Oregon, he worked as a food scientist in the Central Food Technology Research Institute in Mysore. Later, he worked in various sections of DuPont in the USA for over five years. He felt that instead of working in a foreign country for a living, it would be meaningful to strive towards making a healthier society in his own country. Therefore, he returned to India in 1997 and settled down in Mysore. He worked hard to revive five different types of millets that were fast disappearing. In the process of consuming each of these millets, he discovered that the healing properties present in them that could cure even the deadliest of diseases. Hence, he named these five millets Siridhanya. He, he will go into more details you know, during his lecture. In order to cultivate them naturally, Dr. Kadar propounded a method called Kadu Krishi, also known as jungle farming. In fact, he conducts a lot of these farming workshops back in Mysore. Uh, he has been treating his patients for, the, for their diseases by recommending the consumption of siridhanya, different plant and tree decoctions. Rather than having tea, you know, you, you will be you know, uh, advised to have different tree de uh, leaf decoctions and homeopathic medicine in dire cases where it is necessary. He is also of the firm opinion that paddy, rice, wheat, milk, non-vegetarian food, untimely eating habits, genetically modified crops, chemical fertilizers, synthetic pesticides and herbicides are instrumental in polluting the environment and food and thereby leading to the quick spread of lethal diseases. He claims that the consumption of siridhanya can facilitate the prevention and cure of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, constipation, piles, gangrene, triglycerides, PCOD, low sperm count, skin diseases, kidney and thyroid related disorders. Siridhanya also prevents brain and blood related diseases. He is adored by the people of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana alike and we are very glad that you know Dr. Kadavali is now actually you know uh, plans to you know uh, he has come to Bombay a couple of times and he plans to go all over the country to spread this message of you know millet, uh, how millets can change our uh, you know, change our health uh, situation as well as uh, you know change the ecological condition of the country where you know we spend huge amount of resources in cultivating these rice and you know paddy. He connects all the dots by educating people about health, educating farmers about cultivation and preventive methods in his farming. He is also contributing to the preservation of water and nature. His dream is a healthy and sustainable society. Thank you very much and please uh, let us uh, give a big round of applause and welcome Dr. Kadavan. Good afternoon. I hope uh, I don't make you take Shesta after having your lunch and <laughs> listen to me and doze off. Huh? Particularly, I'm not going to follow that, okay? I just keep blabbering something or the other. Huh? Actually, I purposely and mindfully gotten out of this PPT presentation. So, PowerPoint presentations and all. I personally don't like them. Huh? Basically, I would, uh, that would be start. So how about uh, closing down the hospitals next 
six months, say 75% of hospitals. Can we have that as our objective and then work out the details? Why should we want to close down the hospitals? Is the question you would ask me when I say we want to close them. Because they are not doing what they are supposed to do. These guys, the so-called doctors, are not being doctors in the last 30-40 years. They have been reduced to by the system. I am not blaming any doctors in particular. They have been reduced to agents of distributing tablets and little more if it is little higher level they are distributing the technologies at the at the worst. Oh, you have a knee problem? Don't worry. We'll fix one. We'll fix buy one, get one free. So we'll fix both of them. Well, that is the condition to which they have been reduced to. Hey, why is their problem in the knee first place? Can we prevent it? Can we get out of it? All these kinds of questions are not even entertained in the minds of people. And here we have a three-year-old girl brought to me. I am a so-called homeopathy doctor also. Okay? So, I have been practicing homeopathy for the last 23 years. And I am flooded with patients every day, minimum of 100, 200 patients I have to see every day, minimum. Uh, so now I actually resist by escaping from Mysore once in a while like this, three, four days. And my daughter gets the blunt of it actually. She is also a the doctor, she is in the clinic, so she has to. So last, uh, before a uh, week I got a small girl, three years old girl, she is menstruating, three year old girl. Then they didn't come to me immediately, in fact they went to the so called gynecologist and all that. Because they thought some infection and uh, they went to the doctor and then the doctor said some um, urinary infection, he gave some medicine and it didn't stop and then after another three days they went and they said higher antibiotics they gave. After another three days it was still bleeding, then they recognized it is she is bleeding, she is actually bleeding like regular uh, girls after 14, 15 years. Then they rushed to her after another six days. Uh, to the gynecologist and then the gynecologist said, oh God, this is what it is and then she is bleeding. So she put on her on a steroid tablet. Some, there are many. After five days, the bleeding stopped, but then the girl started eating everything, each and everything, anything you could put her biting her out. And she wanted to feed and they gave her food and then after another five days, again she started bleeding. So all this hangama went around for more than 30 days and then they gave three to five steroid tablets uh, and then things didn't work out and she was still bleeding. Then they came to me. Of course, I told them to get people leaves, make kashayam and then give then I told us a little millet is there, you make ambali and give her. So within six days, the kid got all right. You understand the seriousness of the case? That you have a three-year-old girl bleeding, menstruation. And this was actually the case when I first went to America after I did my PhD on steroids. Uh, testosterone and progesterone, androstenedione, all these kinds of sex hormones. I did a lot of work. I did my PhD on microbial transformations of these compounds and uh, 
physiological studies and mammals and all kinds of things. I worked for four years, taught a PhD and then I go to America. And the first day I go to America, I was asked to get a medical certificate. Those days you are supposed to give a physically medical certificate. There were no computers to transfer the reports and all that. So you physically go to a hospital, um, then they take your blood and they will send you to another department and you sit there for some time. I go to another department and they, everyone there is a huge report generated by the end of the day. So I was going through those uh, stuff and then I was waiting in the reception halls of this so-called hospital and then I found a six-year-old girl brought for the same reason. It was in 1986 or 87, I, I, I don't know, 86 or 87. So I asked the doctor what happened to this girl, why is she menstruating? Because I have done my PhD and just submitted and I know the girls in the world should actually menstruate at the age of 14 or 15 approximately. So it was a shock of my life that there is a girl here in America, even if she was one girl alone, single case, I, I was shocked. Because why, why how did this happen? And the doctor said, these things happen. You know, he didn't even care to answer or take, acknowledge my question also. But then I was shocked because it, I just started thinking, what is happening here? And then I started inquiring. And in fact, by then itself in America, girls were menstruating on a regular basis at the age of 9 and 10. And this girl was an extraordinary special case as she started at 6. But now in America, the average age of girls who are menstruating at 7 or 8 is almost 40 to 50 percent. So something went wrong in America by 1987 itself. So the reasons I wanted to figure out and it took me not more than three days that they started feeding their babies this extra milk of so-called Jersey cows and HF cows where they have already manipulated genetically to make the cow give 20 liters of milk because the ladies in America by then itself did not want to feed their babies they wanted to attend their careers within two weeks, three weeks they take the babies into nursery and the so called nurseries and then they, they give the bottles water, the milk and then they have all the setup they simply put the, with the nipples of uh, plastic and you know, those time it was rubber and plastic still this uh, polymer nipples have not yet uh, come so they were doing that and so already five ten years were over so the babies of that they had already got this wonderful milk extra milk which had actually been uh, produced by oxytocin and uh, estrogen injections to this cow so it didn't take long for me to figure this out and then uh, that is the reason why the kids are menstruating early because they have got hormonal what imbalance the body is supposed to produce this at that particular age and we are designed and then genetically signaled at that particular time so, and you know it is called a plant has got a vegetative life and then sexual life just like that we human beings are supposed to come the female part of it is at around 14, 15 and then yeah, young boys produce their sperms around 15, 16, something like that. So this is nature. But then what happened? Because of these guys selecting to make these cows produce a lot of milk in the name of biotechnology, in the name of genetic engineering, they were all actually bombarding uh, advertisements of milk, complete food, you know. Then they show a big, uh, uh, they actually in, in America it's not a liter. Gallon. Gallon is 4.2 liters or something like that. So big plastic dabas and uh, marketed in big uh, bazaars or whatever they call it, Walmart or something like that. Um, so they, they keep bring and give milk, you know, like half liter, people just gulping down. And that is the reason why the kids started menstruating and no one cared. Half the kids are menstruating at the age of 9 and 10 
and they didn't care. So we changed the nature of the girls. So basically what happened is you are stealing away the childhood from the girls. So every month you, if it happens at 15, you are physically, bodily, mentally, you are right away. This is what has happened and the, the imbalance started. And on, not only that, on top of that, the another big mistake that has happened is that the ladies did not want to go through the labor. They don't want to give birth to the babies through their vagina. Instead, they want their tummies to be cut open and then... That resulted in another imbalance that basically mothers lodge some microbes into the mouth of the baby when the baby is coming out of the vagina. That's actually the initial microbial, gut microbes incubation. Mm. That is the most beautiful thing that should happen actually to a baby. So you are stealing that also. So two imbalances we have created just before the baby comes out of the... As soon as they come out, these guys are actually standing, lining up with all one, two, three, four, and now twenty-one vaccination. You see, within a span of three hours of the baby coming out, and then within three months, you created the most horrible things that you can do to a human being. And all in the name of what? Science. The most unscientific things you do to a human baby and call yourself scientist and the most advanced science you have multi Specialty hospitals popping up everywhere now in the world in the name of allopathic science. And we all have to take it lying down. I have never even today felt the most unscientific thing that is going on in this planet is these two things. That means giving milk to your babies. What, are, what is actually milk? Let's just define it. What is milk? Ladies, we have already given milk to their babies. Okay, gents. Wow, calcium, protein, wow. What else? Ha, huh, it is actually a mammalian stuff. Any mammal on this planet when gives birth to the baby is the first food that the mother produces to be delivered to the baby's mouth directly from the nipple of the mother. That is the definition. What does it make? It makes the milk the most unstable product on this planet actually. Because if you keep the milk out within 15 minutes it is different than what it is delivered. So how a milk product, how milk should be delivered into the baby, be directly from the nipple of the milk. See the unscientificness. Now what are we doing? We are taking some other animal, whether it is cow or pig or uh, whatever it is. Because cow is poor fellow, available freely and it doesn't do any harm, it is very mild and uh, so we fall upon it. I, we, we, could, we don't have tiger's milk. You know? We have to kill you. So we think, oh, cow is sacred. Because it doesn't do anything, it is sacred. If it just hits you one, like donkey, <laughs> you don't give donkeys milk. Now, I'm giving you the reasons why cow milk. So, you have this poor cow, because it is very mild and doesn't do anything, it allows you to suck its milk. You do all this nonsense and you call it science. And then, as he was trying to define, milk is protein, calcium. How much calcium is there, sir, in the milk? In fact, that is the reason when I said to my patients, don't give milk. Milk is the ultimate poison for your babies. Because the milk of any other animal doesn't have the same hormonal balance of what you have and in fact 
the milk that you give in the first three weeks is different from the milk that you give after three weeks. In fact, after another three weeks it is different. And imagine you have another baby after one year. The milk that you get is not the milk that you should feed to the first baby because it is not good. It is different. The requirement of the baby's growth at that particular stage is different. So milk is a, another word you need to add is a dynamic it changes. The same mother after three weeks gives different milk. First actually three hours you get something called cholesterol. It's not just milk, it has got also got a lot of antibodies that gives the protection for the babies. But then we have here got 21 shots ready. In fact that is the reason why babies are not coming out. They don't want to come out at all. <laughs> You see, all in the name of science and high-end marketing techniques. And that's why now and then I casually say MBBS is business of medicine and business of surgery. It's supposed to be bachelor of medicine and bachelor of surgery. So in the last 15-20 years they have been reduced to this. Because no doctor, no scientist is questioning this. Why the hell should I give milk to my baby? Or a doctor should say, hey, don't give milk. But have I seen any doctor saying, don't give milk to your baby? No. Because those guys have done, all the guys, because they are all trained here, they come back here. Oh, I am trained in America, I am trained in Oxford, or whatever, MIT or what, what something. What happened to our brains? If they are stupid, we are idiots. So what do you feed your baby? Your milk. Nine months in your tummy, nine months on the breast. That's what it is meant for. So, other way around people talk. Oh, I don't get my milk. That's why I'm giving Orvita or whatever, you know, Horlicks and you know, all this. Doctors started writing Dabas after Dabas. They became agents of selling this the bus. Don't mistake me, I'm not, I don't have any particular doctor in mind. This is what has happened in the last 30-40 years. How the system reduces the so-called doctors into the agents of selling these products is what I'm just tracing out historically. Now to the extent that FDA says you have to give milk to everyone, now it is pushing through governments as a nutritional, there is a word, they are using it, nutritional obligation of the governments to provide the malnourished people. And it is again a biggest scam of the plant. They are all pushing their milk products, this dairy industries, nothing more than and all in the name of science because FDA has given permission a stream of experts, nutrition experts have got a guidelines and protocols. Who are these guys? Have they learnt the definition of milk? They are defining milk should have this calcium, this, 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 this. And the milk the calcium you don't get any of it into your body. You give to 10 liters of milk. You know how much calcium has got in one liter of milk? Does anyone know? I was told some nutritionists have come here. All these nutritionists are running around, you know, rampaging everyone. How much calcium is there in one liter of milk? Are there any nutritionists? Please raise your hands. Goodness. That's wrong. 920 milligrams to 995 milligrams per liter. That's the range. But it's same one kilo sesame seed has got how much calcium? Does anyone know? It has got 10 grams of calcium. One liter of coconut milk 
has got 650 milligrams of calcium. One liter of groundnut milk has got 700 milligrams of calcium. So if you want calcium to your baby, what milk do you want to give? And do you know this 995 milligrams of calcium from the cow's milk? If you feed the baby one liter, how much calcium does the baby absorb? It's only 180 milligrams because only the milk digesting capacity of the baby is only till two years or two and a half years. It can take only that much calcium. But if you make Sesame seed milk can give 100 ml containing 1 gram, 90% of it is absorbed. So which milk do you want to give your baby? If, if calcium is your parameter. Why am I telling you all this is because it is the business end of this so-called scientists that have been writing our books. Say, milk, complete food, for whom? If I ask a question. The question of milk being food is a bogus thing. But the sad story doesn't stop there. Because they have made this as business, they started producing milk. To produce one liter of milk, you need approximately 15,000 liters of water. You see how it has translated into environmental burden? Because you guys are all drinking as if that's not enough. Everyone, it's good for everyone, milk, it is nutritious. Thing. So everyone started drinking, not, not the babies themselves should not touch. Everyone, left and right, communists, RSS fellows, everyone started drinking. Christians, Buddhists, Jains. The so-called Buddhists and Jains are not supposed to touch them. As if that is not enough. Everyone drink chai pe charcha. Let's do chai pe charcha. Now why coffee, tea, milk? Let's do paneer. Concentrate the milk. More milk. So 10 liters of milk becomes one kilo of uh, paneer and so you want to take the steroids and then antibiotics in large quantities as a small quantity not enough not enough and all at a sudden you have Shahrukh Khan showing off his six packs and uh, Salman Khan of course has been showing off from long time and then Amir Khan joined into some dangal bangal movie all these guys all at a sudden this Six packs, ten pack movies started because this whey protein, this protein, that protein market has to be found. All at a sudden you find it, look and kind of every city, Jimmy, Jimmy. You know, why only boys gym? We also gym. Ladies also started gym. As if this is not enough. All at a sudden you find many of the girls all over the world finding mustache on their lips. Even then, it didn't strike people. Oh, no problem, we have beauty parlors. Don't worry, come on, come on, schedules have been busy. All at a sudden, you have hundreds of girls and running into gyms, running into beauty parlors. You know, all is very happy. All these chemical companies doing businesses. And the human race is just following like goats running, jumping. So you don't understand this. Financials of these movies are these guys. And all these guys have become icons of showing off and, and what is happening with our hormone in the environment. All these guys showing off have no sperm counts. 20 millions as you now what is written. Even the so-called diagnostic labs are writing the range, sperm count, 20 million is okay. It should have actually been 120 million, 100 is gone. These are all the bogus things that have been done by this industry in the last 40 years. And still they call themselves doctors. That's why I said so-called doctors. Not even one tells all these things. 
So what is a doctor supposed to do when the baby is born? Don't give milk to your baby, give sesame seed milk, coconut milk, groundnut milk. Otherwise you are hormonally imbalanced with the kid from the day one you are doing that. So I have babies now for the last 15 years. We have done this. Hundreds and thousands of kids now till now have not visited even once for 15 years doctors. No doctor is necessary. That's why I keep telling in my lectures, if we stop drinking milk, I can close down half the hospitals in the world in a matter of eight to nine months. Come on, give claps. Man. Why are you so serious? You see the logic? You see the science of it? So the choice of food has been driven by these big corporate companies. And all these doctors, scientists are all party to it. Knowingly or unknowingly. So the nutritionists, the doctors, all these big, big institutions are being funded by these guys. So what you learn is what they want you to. So I have talked to you about the imbalance of hormones. And microbial imbalance. So by gulping down this nonsense, you are killing whatever little microbes that you are actually attracting by eating vegetables and fruits because almost all the vegetables and fruits have got microbes associated with them and then the gut chooses the right ones and then starts inhabiting them into their system and then each and every one of us have got wonderful microbiome in our tummies and in fact that is what is actually 50% of biochemical reactions are conducted by these gut microbes and they actually synthesize some wonderful chemicals that your body cannot one of them being so called vitamin B12 till recently the pharmaceutical companies could not synthesize vitamin B12 I think in the last six years or so they succeeded after that all at a sudden, many of diagnostics labs started saying, you have vitamin B12 deficiency. Till then there was no problem about vitamin B12 because they, don't, they didn't have tablets to sell. Even now, if you want to get vitamin B12, it doesn't come from the meat. Where does the meat get vitamin B12? It is the grains, it is the vegetables, it is the grass that these animals eat, harbor, those microbes make vitamin B12 and it is incorporated into the meat of some animal, whether it is a deer or a pig or a cow, whatever it is. The same way you also make vitamin B12. So by eating the pig, eating the chicken, eating deer and someone I can hunt and then eat, doesn't get you vitamin B12. Because all over the world people are eating meat, like mad people. Ramzan, you are supposed to fast. But you know Hyderabad and Bangalore, recently there were newspaper uh, columns. Bangalore, I believe, eats one lakh tons per year, meat. So average per month is around 10,000 tons. But then Ramzan Mantha, they checked, they were eating three times more. As per norms, you are supposed to fast, that means it should come down. Muslims are 16% or 14% in Bangalore, I think 18% in Hyderabad. Both cities have increased their meat consumption in that particular month. What does that indicate? I don't know about Mumbai, I'm sure it is the same <laughs> thing that happens. What does it indicate? It means in the name of Muslims, all are eating in the night because they are not supposed to eat in the mornings. It's 24-7 your Mumbai fellows now, bars open. I don't understand. You want to drink in the morning also? I thought you can drink in the night. 24-7 you are going to open your bars means you don't want to work. All through the, at least they should close down in the daytime. No? The same thing happens to the people. In the name of Muslims, in Ramadan time, night, they are eating the whole night. They are called biryani points, this points, that points. 
Am Halima, all these kinds of things. So they have increased their meat. Now, what did they do by eating meat and that food? They are dumping themselves more of antibiotics and more of steroids. Because to prepare one kilo of meat in this artificial means you are actually taking concentration. It's called bioconcentration. Eight times more chemicals are coming into your meat. So if you want to get that chemical dose, you need to eat eight kilos of grain. By eating one kilo of it, you are getting all of it once. That's what it means. So actually, there is also another survey in Bangalore and Hyderabad. After Ramjan, you have many people visiting doctors. Their business is booming the next month. That's because their immunity levels go down, they catch COVID, they do that and all this. This is a very funny thing, isn't it? So what you are eating is driving you to the hospital. So what are they handing over? They are giving you tablets. Does any doctor tell you don't eat meat because of this, this is happening? No. That's why I made that statement that we are ultimately reduced. So called doctors are reduced to agents of distributing these tablets. Worse comes, no problem, come we will do operation. Yeah, what are you talking? I we thought you would talk about millets you are talking about. This is only background. Another five minutes. My volunteer, this man described me, he saw my video of 45 minutes or something. He said he's bashing someone. I'm not bashing anyone. I'm telling you the facts. This is what has happened in the last 20, 30 years all over the world. In the name of milk, in the name of meat, in the name of vitamin B12. So you really want vitamin B12? Where do you get it from? You get through microbes. So you want to balance your tummy with microbes. Have you been eating anything that encourages microbes in your body? You want to get microbes, you need fiber. So do you have any fibrous grains in your thali? No, zero. Where is your nutrition? You want vitamin B12? You cannot get it from meat. You cannot get it from tablets. Because you can take tablets, it doesn't get absorbed. Because vitamin B12 integrates itself only through microbial process. It is the microbes that give you the vitamin B12 and make it work. So what are these doctors doing by selling vitamin B12 tablets? Are they not lying to you? So you take tablets and still it is there. Nothing is working there because you don't have microbes. That means you are completely imbalanced microbially. So how do you get balance? You go on dumping um, uh, antibiotics through food and you have probably you go doctor again you'll give another antibiotic. How scientific is this whole process? On the contrary, I told you, we have kids who have not visited doctors for 15 years, 10 years, 12 years. How do we do that? We balance them without hormonal imbalance if they can sustain, without microbial imbalance they can sustain. Then these good things happen. So we have these wonderful grains which you can make into ambali. Ambali is called fermented porridge. So you soak this grain in the night any five these grains. I will talk to you more about the grains. There is one more imbalance that we need to talk. It's called glucose imbalance. That is the ultimate stuff. Because all living things on this planet, especially animals, have to burn glucose to get their energy at the end of the day. You burn glucose, release energy, catch in the form of ATP, and then the ATP runs around and gives you energy to perform all your living activities. So if ATP is not used, then you cannot burn glucose. It has self-regulating. So you want to work, make your body work. Every day, so much consumption of ATP has to happen if the glucose has to burn. 
Otherwise, what happens? Glucose goes in, the mitochondria looks at it, ATP is there, I cannot burn you, sends it back. So the glucose quietly comes out. You don't need insulin for it to come out. But for to go into the cells, you need insulin. So what does insulin do, poor guy? He just leaves them inside and then forgets. It. But this fellow is not burnt, he quietly comes back into the bloodstream. So the insulin says, I just sent you in, you come out again. I can take it in. Again comes back. So five times, ten times, what the hell am I doing? Insulin thinks, then it communicates. So this fellow is floating around, he is excess. That's called feedback switch. So let's do something more about this glucose because I'm pushing him, he's coming out. So let I figure out some other metabolism where I can push glucose into. So let's make some cholesterol because there is a gene that has got a biosynthetic pathway of making cholesterol. So it takes the glucose and pushes it. But we need cholesterol only so much. Why do we need cholesterol? You want vitamin D? It is the base. So you have cholesterol in your body, go into the sun, that photochemical reaction converts it into vitamin D. So you want vitamin D, you need cholesterol. So glucose, ah yeah, I have the pathway, I'll turn to more glucose. Uh, glucose is excess, let's turn it to cholesterol. Then you have more cholesterol, what happens? It is a lipid, base of many of lipids. It's actually a steroidal base. Cholesterol is also, cholesterol is not a steroid, it is a steroid molecule. It is actually the base for many of the steroidal hormones. You have all biosynthetic pathways arising from cholesterol. It actually, these are kinds of chemicals are called junctures from which you take off to various pathways. You understand that point? So, glucose now is converted into more of cholesterol. Then again it has a switch. If you go beyond that, it will switch off. So, again things are worked out. Oh, so I cannot make more cholesterol unless it is used. So, you have another trigger like triglycerides, another trigger, glycogen. What is glycogen? Again, what is it doing? Oh, you have too much glucose. Actually, glucose came from carbohydrates. There is a polymer of glucose and fructose and so. It has divided through digestion, but then we are not using it. So, again, it starts packing. Glycogen is again another complex carbohydrate. The body does it. The liver does it. So, you have more glycogen. You have more files, you make a box and that's your fat. And then you have more fat, okay, you get some amino acids, make some meat. So what has happened in this process? People started becoming fat, obese. That's how you are all putting on weight. Why? Because there is excess glucose in your blood supplied from this rice and wheat. Because there is no fiber to hold the glucose Rice, yeah, all that I spoke, has free carbohydrate. There is no glucose hindrance, nothing to hinder the glucose release into the blood. Within 15, 20 minutes, you flood your blood with the glucose. And the system is doing all it, its wits have come to an end. It has made glu uh, gly uh, cholesterol, it has made triglycerides, it has made rheumatic factor, it has made glycogen, it has made meat, it has made fat. Everything is happening. Still, you are pumping in glucose so much so if you just eat 100 grams of idlis, that rice idlis, you will have got almost 45 grams of glucose. And then all at a sudden we have all these great trinity of cons selling Pepsi, Coke and... Uh, what comes up. Huh? Each fellow is selling 100 ml of Pepsi, 45 grams of glucose, sugar. As if that's not enough, Americans eat donuts, Americans eat their confectionery addictions are humongous. Ice cream, on top of it chocolate, on top of it some syrup, on top of it chocolate, oh, one Sunday, they call Sunday, banana Sunday, what kind of names? 
one is good enough to flood your blood with 150 grams of glucose. So done. You know how much time you need to walk to spend 5 grams of glucose out of your blood? Does anyone know nutritionist? 15 minutes it takes for 1 gram to become ATP. You pump carbon dioxide out, ATP is 1 gram glucose. So 5 grams to be completely out of your system, you need to walk 75 minutes. Now how much have you put with one Pepsi, one Sandi, one banana, Mandi, whatever? 150 grams. How much time do you walk, madam? 30 hours. How many hours are there in a day? This is what I call glucose imbalance. So you have glucose imbalance. You have microbial imbalance, you have hormone imbalance. And no doctor till today talks about these things. And they are all busy selling tablets. So what the doctor has supposed to do, he just has to tell the patient, guys, this is the imbalance, this is the imbalance. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. If a doctor tells all these three, I believe I can close down the remaining 45% of the hospitals. Come on, clap. Five percent we need for ICU accidents. And believe me, it is as simple as this. There are no ifs and buts. As simple as this, we have demonstrated we have had wonderful results. Thousands and thousands are getting well. We have done this. And we have figured out these wonderful five grains which can do this. Now, actually, in southern India, many people used to call me, I am a miracle man. They call me miracle man. Actually, I like to call myself millet man, not miracle man. Miracles are ones that are done once in a while, like Sai Baba or Christ, you touch and then solve it. I don't need to touch, I don't want to touch. Not one or two or three, I have cured maybe thousands of diabetic patients, thousands of migraine patients, thousands of gangrene patients. I have not even seen many of them. They have cured themselves because we have provided the information, lot of information. Just run through, oh, th this is what I was talking about, the carbohydrate and fiber ratio. So we did, actually how did I chance upon this? So, so this logic went through my mind, then I figured out, oh, we need to find some grain which can actually release glucose slowly and steadily into the bloodstream so that we don't have this flooding of glucose into our blood. What can do this magic? So, the simple thing as a scientist I need to do was to figure out what are the grains that can release glucose slowly and steadily. Of course, we know rice and wheat are measurable failures. <laughs> That's why we have so many diseases. The reason is, out of 100 MD, MS doctors, 30 of them are diabetic. Out of 100 PhD scientists, 30 of them are diabetic. Out of 100 auto drivers, 30 are diabetic. So there is no difference between MDMS doctors, scientists and auto drivers. They have no idea what they are doing. This fellow also has no idea what he is doing. It is not 5 years, 10 years. It has been going on. And sadly, WHO goes on announcing every 5 years that we have 20% of diabetic patients, 15% of cancer patients, this, that, it is only increasing, it is not coming down. If and if we had some knowledge, some science, some technique, some whatever thing in place, by now the number of patients should have been coming down. 
No, it's not. Actually, it is zoom. It is like a rocket that is going up the graph. So what does that indicate? As a whole, human race has miserably failed in understanding what is going on. That's because they have no idea what food is. MDMS course, six or seven years or eight years, I don't know how many years they do. No food is mentioned. So, ultimately what happens now is we need to define what food is. So, I have already given you a clue. Now, food is something that should release glucose slowly and steadily into your bloodstream. So, where is the regulation? It is not in your genes, it is not in your enzyme, it is not in your tummy. It should be in the food. And carbohydrate metabolism is the primary metabolism. We have to burn glucose. You have to get glucose into your tummy. You have to eat carbohydrates. There is no option for you. But that's how our enzymes are designed. Hydrolases. You have 61% of them are hydrolases. If you see genetic coding. Alright? If there are any doctors, or they, they understand what I am speaking. So that means you have to push carbohydrate into your mouth. There are no options. But then, what kind of carbohydrate which doesn't release glucose in a flood? So that means there should be regulation. What is the regulation coming from? Where is it coming? It is through this wonderful fiber to carbohydrate ratio. So you should have enough fiber such that the ratio becomes into single digits and that's what you find. You see, we did this experiment and we collected all the data. In fact, this particular brown top millet, the whole data is done by me. No one has done till today. I was the first fellow to do. And it happens to be the lowest. And what I did, okay, this looks fantastic, isn't it? So you see, you see the other things, ragi, that is finger millet, proso millet, grape millet, corn. All these guys have all wonderful things. But then if you see the thing, you have a wonderful B complex loaded here. So all that you want from food, you have in this five grains. In fact, which I have not mentioned, I will come to you about that aspect later. You see, this is 55. What is that? Pearl millet. You have this is finger millet and this is proso millet, this is great millet, 63.5, the wheat, this is paddy rice. So many people say, oh no, 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 this white rice is not good, brown rice is good, red rice is good, unpolished rice is good, whatever rice that you are talking, basmati rice, I have just grown myself and then I pound and then I eat, all that is here with so whatever you eat rice, paddy rice, is going to flood your blood with glucose and you are going to have one or the other problem today or tomorrow or day after day. Irrespective of what it is. Because you have no control. So how did I figure? What I did was I made porridge of all these grains. Started feeding 10 diabetic patients whose HbA1c was 10. That means what? They cannot hold glucose in their blood. They put it into their urine in a matter of one or one and a half hours. It is called renal tolerance test. So now I am there. I am a healthy person. If I drink 100 ml of sugar juice, I don't urinate with glucose in it because my body is working. It doesn't send the glucose, it actually tries to absorb, put it here, put it there, it doesn't. But if I do the same thing for a fellow whose HbA1c is 10, simply comes out actually. I mean within one hour you see glucose in his urine. So what we did was we took this porridge of foxtail and fed him. I took collected urine after one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, even after five hours, Glucose doesn't appear in this way. You feed wheat or rice within 15 to 20 minutes, you see the glucose. What does this mean? 
these five grains have got wonderful control of releasing the glucose into the blood so even if you take a diabetic patient whose hbmc is 10 it doesn't come out into the urine that means this is the food that a diabetic patient should eat to get rid of his disease lo and behold after you feed this diabetic patient three months the hba1c comes to 4 5 and remains to be so for however long you are eating this grains and we have had wonderful results thousands and thousands are curing themselves i just actually went to nigeria last 3 uh, 4 months back i've had hundreds of them coming to me and say we have cured our problem in fact many gangrene patients for leg to be amputated thousands have cured till then they have had all and tomorrow fixed their amputation even such people have come out of this problem gangrene so i said oh wonderful this is what actually so the essence of this is that the people are losing balance so if you correct the glucose balance in your system by food so we have no disease so very you don't need any medicine absolutely no need of it because it is through that glucose which is excess you had cholesterol problem you had triglycerides problem you have bp problem you have stunt oh, all blocks you are eating too many things cholesterol is high triglycerides high glycogen meat fat everything accumulated in your blood vessel that's why you need a stunt no problem one stunt after the other they are trying to incorporate you don't need all these stunts you understand the pun s t u e n t s t e n t so we could actually give all these so called bp patients and then the heart uh, blocked patients you know these grains lo and behold within 6 weeks to 3 months all these so called blocks have dissolved of course along with it we also provide some natural juices like uh, cucumber juice and uh, ash gourd juice and loki juice they also help dissolve this so like this we did lot of experiments with the decoctions for various human diseased conditions and the underlying principle is correcting the balance be it hormone balance be it microbial balance be it glucose balance so one of these three imbalances is major cause of our problems if not one we are actually imbalanced in all the three departments now many women became all right post menstrual menstrual uh, menopause post menopause so many names are there now actually you have type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes type 3 diabetes and bahubali 1 to bahubali 3 series of making fun of us these guys go on naming names name 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 and confuse people this cancer that cancer sarcoma lymphoma adenoma toma poma all kinds of everything is cancer you are making the body not respond it goes on dividing whether it is blood cell or this cell or that cell it is the signal that is gone wrong how do we correct that now you have this treacherous therapies radio therapy chemo therapy this therapy that therapy harm what nonsense are they don't mistake me and this is troubling people people are suffering as if that is not enough enough of diseases now we have a problem in america and china and japan something called alzheimers now 18% of people are getting into alzheimers condition what is alzheimers i keep this bottle here and walk here i don't know where i kept my bottle i keep searching here the bottle is there then after some time my wife name is usha oh, usha who is usha 
I just think because I have forgotten the connection. Then all at a sudden, someone says, "Wisha, oh, Wisha is my wife's name." I remember. Then after some time, actually, I I heard someone is Wisha here. Wisha is here somewhere. Wisha is here. Any Wisha? Oh, Wisha. Ah, yeah, I know. I remember some Wisha I heard. So when I see someone telling me Wisha, then I remember I have a wife called Wisha. You understand? what i am explaining to you and then after some time i see usha my wife but i don't remember that she is my wife you understand what is happening now after some time i know iit bombay i am working in iit bombay i come to iit bombay and then i don't recognize this is iit bombay i know i am working in iit bombay after some more time i don't know who i am after some more time i don't know where i am after some more time i don't know that the time is morning and after some more time i don't know i am sleeping do you understand what i am telling that means you are slowly losing the consciousness of yourself you do not know who you are and that is what is called alzheimer's it's all happening because of this imbalances your nervous system is going out of whack and the signals are not the cp is going out of order you see how we are driving the diseases down into deeper and deeper levels of our existence and as if that is not enough and it's all happening because of your food and no doctor is now pointing it to that no problem we have a tablet anything you say we have a tablet we have a tablet we have a tablet what the hell are we doing with the tablets did anyone get cured with one tablet 10 tablets 20 tablets 20 tons of tablets you see the futile exercise of giving handing over tablets and we call this science no one is cured till today by any tablet because you don't understand what food is if your food is right there is no need of medicine and if your food is wrong no medicine works so understand your food that's where health is not in the hospitals not in this multi speciality hospitals and all these high tech gadgets that they are reeling out around you mri pet scan cat scan skin scan that scan so what all that scans you have done next what do you know how to correct this sadly we have got now in the whole world ADHD kids are roaming the roads now. 15% of the kids on this planet Earth right now are being born as ADHD. That means we are producing dysfunctional kids. And I believe this WHO has no other business. They are declaring in another 15 years you have 33% of ADHD. So that means in the next coming few generations you are going to have one out of two kids. dysfunctional kids that dysfunctional kids they do not know who they are so we have already alzheimer patients coming out and that is the future for you and these guys these scientists these so called nobel directors or scientific institutions are not willing to say that this is because of this and every year Nobel laureates are being declared biochemistry this fellow that fellow all kind. What are they doing? Have they been able to solve one issue? And that's why I told if they are stupid, we're idiots. We keep following whatever they do. Import all the things. In fact, very sad story is that one of. 
the brahmins got cancer lung cancer he went to bangalore this happened he he what is it some kidwaya or some hospital is there so the when you chemotherapy then what you, you need to drink chicken soup that fellow didn't have any meat or he is a pakka madhva brahmin got cancer because that fellow went on drinking coffee left and right and then hormone imbalance and uh, eats uh, gulab jamuns 10 15 And then he is a very eat uh, chicken soup. No, sir, I cannot. You know, this is what because the doctor went to America and learned after chemotherapy they give chicken soup. You give chicken soup. Then he, of course, he came to us and then he said, "See, they asked me to drink. You, know, you drink milk. What's the problem? You can also take chicken soup. I told you." So these Brahmins think drinking milk is okay. Drinking ch- chicken soup is not okay. milk is non vegetarian so no one should touch milk but if you put fermentation lactobacillus it turns into vegetarian because that's what happens in nature so through the microbes you eat even siridhanya that becomes your meat because that microbes are converting the vegetarian into non vegetarian now the same microbes not necessarily the same different kinds of microbes turn the non veg to veg. so it is that fermentation process that is very very important it is the bridge and that's how fermented products are very very crucial in your food and the whole human race has forgotten about fermentation so that's why i keep shouting top of my voice ambali that is fermented porridge is the real food for human beings so you have any disease or no disease doesn't matter you want to be healthy minimum of 2 to 3 meals if possible one meal a day should be ambali fermented porridge and that is the first lesson of nutrition for you because what all you are talking is actually done by them you can only talk they will do the job so if only you just eat ambali of barnyard ambali of fox tail ambali of this these five grains are great because they have the capacity to release glucose slowly and steadily but then funnily right now people are still left with the ragi and jola all this grains are wiped out because of two technical reasons they are wiped out because if you grow them you cannot eat them directly they are rice actually these are rice ragi is not rice pearl millet is not rice it is wheat kind of grain you can grind them make them into powder flour and chapati that kind of thing you cannot cook pearl millet and eat like rice because they have no husk on top of them once you grow you can actually directly use them so these grains have actually husk over them you need to dehusk them dehusking is a big task those days you have to pound them you call what is it chakki eh? chakki what is it chakki then you get this grain dehusked grain and if you put it in machine you remove the top layers when you actually harvest this grains you are supposed to cut when it is little wet if it is dry the grains fall off from the pinnacle so to cut and allow it to settle down it is called maggodu in our language you ripen it so the whole stem the water everything is sucked into it and the husking material the top layer actually deposits lignans the precursors of lignin wood on to the grain so you want to eat this unpolished ones because lignans are actually the most important materials to keep you away from cancer the carcinogenicity of the living cells can be eliminated through lignans because it is the ultimate pmf pmf is proton motive force 
we have all the biochemical reactions happening because there is EMF and PF, PMF in the cell. Electron motive force. And PMF is not actually regulated by your protons. It is actually regulated by a pool of electrons. So the electron is tumbling down and releasing energy and you have various chemical reactions happening. So ultimately the tumbling down has to end. Not in catching a proton. Because if you have a proton, you have to again have an electron there. So lignans are the ultimate pools of electron annulation. They absorb it and keep it with themselves because lignans are highly aromatic molecules which can just take an electron and keep them going round and round. And that is the beauty of lignans. And they are present in abundance in the upper fiber layers and they are actually insoluble. So when you eat 100 grams of these grains, 5 grains, you have two types of fibers. One is insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. Soluble fiber is actually in the inner layers. It's a concentric circle arrangement. The carbohydrate and the fiber is arranged like that. So when you... So the layers are concentric and from within, center. And that's why you need to soak the grain for long hours because the top layers get soaked within half an hour and then you think you put it in your pressure cooker, push, push, push for three times and ah, I'm ready and it's actually ready. You can eat, you feel it's okay because the top layer is cooked. But the inner layer, unless it is soaked, it cannot be cooked. That's why we keep insisting you've got to soak before you cook. But nowadays, the ladies are all used to this. Why cook? Call Zomato, Swiggy, Bruvo. See, where is the health now? It is in your kitchen. How to cook your grain? Because all these wonderful things have to be maintained. Means you need to soak them and have the upper layer so you get unpolished grains of siridanya cook them properly you see in fact your rajma beans all these dicotyledons the pulses also you are supposed to soak if you don't soak the protein the amino acids chains also have to be actually hydrated before they are digested and that's what is the problem present today you guys are because cooker is there you put it push push it is cooked you eat but actually it is not hydrated protein that is to be cooked you are not hydrating the protein you dry protein you it's all you have gas oh, oh my god nowadays these so-called ayurveda doctors oh you eat these sprouts of this you eat sprout you will have troubles you have to soak them and then steam little bit so that the digestion so you should know what you are eating and how you are eating. So the methods of cooking becomes very, very important. So a protein or a carbohydrate with fiber has to be soaked for 6 to 8 hours. How do you know? That is by experiments. You soak for 2 hours and eat, you will have 3 hours and eat, 5 hours and eat. So 6 to 7 hours minimum you get to soak. But the present day technology makes you feel that it is okay. It is cook in half an hour. Yeah, why? No need of mother, no need of father. Amitabh Bachchan comes and sells noodles. Two minutes, put it in boiling water. So we are all happy. But that's not the way you cook. But in the name of business, in the name of corporate thing, these are all, every minute they are bombarding with this TV advertisement. So you all think cooking should be done in zip. But the most unscientific thing that the society is allowing these kinds of ads. In the last 30-40 years, no nutritionist has come and said this is wrong. Instead, the opposite is happening. With white coat and things. So they are coming and Promoting these things. You understand the mistakes that the human race has been making in the name of business, in the name of science, in the name of development. And the proof of the 
problem is that we are having hospitals, we are having pharmaceutical companies making not tablets in kilos, they are making in tons. Do you know, I just happened to go to one of my Mysore medical uh, shop. I asked him, how much tablets do you sell? Van Tac, this one, degassing. One small shop, huh? that fellow said, three kilos. In one day. Then I got shocked. That means so much digestive troubles people have. That means everyone is popping up on Three kilos, one day, a small shop. So just, I closed my eyes and then said, Oh, there are 1800 medical shops in Mysuru. Each fellow selling three kilos. How much? 5.4. I mean, 5,400 5, kilos of Vantac tablet. Can you believe that? And imagine the whole Bangalore and then the whole Mumbai and you know, just mind boggling. That means we are all not having any digestive. Why? Because we screwed up our mic gut microbes. So, what is the. If I want to stop all this Vantac business, you may ask, why do you want to do that? Because after eating Rantac, what is actually happening is more microbes are disappearing. So more trouble comes. So actually it is spinning the business. Because with one tablet you are not good enough. After a few weeks, you want to have two tablets. And this is the problem. So what do you want to do? You just tell your patients or whatever you call customers or clients or whatever, you know. These marketing fellows have different names. One tumbler of Ambali, fermented porridge daily if you have. Within six weeks, believe me, there were people who were said, I have been taking Trantec for 20 years. We have relieved them of taking tablets and the disturbance and the discomfort in a matter of six weeks. So any disease, in fact, I have cancer protocol, HIV protocol, SLE protocol, DMD protocol. For everyone, I first instance says, first six weeks, let your meals be, all the three meals, though you are supposed to eat two meals after 15 or 20 years of age. But we are following those guys, we want to eat three times, four times. Nowadays, midnight biryanis are also coming. You don't want to stop eating. You want to keep eating 24. But 24 into 7 when you can drink, why not eat? 24 into 7 we want to eat. That's because we are releasing glucose in a go, in a zip. Again you are hungry. Though it is there, you still feel want to eat. See, this is the sad story. So if you drink one tumbler of this Ambly, maybe 25 grams, the amount of glucose it releases is 1 gram, 2 gram, quantum, slowly and steadily. You don't feel hungry for 3 to 4 hours. And if you eat the food with millets, morning to evening you are not hungry. So morning Surya gets up and eats 7 or 8 idlis, done for the day. Till evening you don't need any food. Because you have soaked them, it also has got a lot of water. You don't even want to drink water. Drink water in the morning, I mean you can go and attend to other works. Nowadays, but the doctors are advising, you have to eat every two hours, you know that? Eat at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock. You keep eating, no other work. I am trying to just add some humor. But these are all serious things. Very, very serious problems that we are facing as a society and we are not even aware of it. And you are made to believe that this is the science of it. And that's where I am deeply pained. 
it is the knowledge that has to be shared not the tablets not the technology not the business health is not in the money health is in sharing the knowledge but then here the so called scientists are patenting they don't want to share oh oh following their cue the so called i oh, i have a wonderful medicine please order on amazon online i will send you in plastic dabbas so it is sharing of the knowledge that can get the human societies out of sickness and impart health so you produce these things locally so we actually came up with different kinds of leaves that decoctions that can actually give you immediate boost to your health condition and then the permanent healing takes place with this wonderful package of siridhanya and once you are healthy you can take even the remaining five grains which we have labeled it as neutral grains ragi jola prosomelad corn nekke and why they are still remaining people's now and then so i have got a finger millet because it is easy that's how it has remained with us in use now so people who don't have water facilities can still grow ragi only because they can immediately use it whereas if they grow this they have to figure out how to remove how to because all machine no technology is there because these institutions institutionalized killing of local foods and food materials and seeds has taken place in the boardrooms of these big companies for your kind information systematically they have eliminated for your kind information this is called fox tail millet this and it is also called italian millet that means italians in the alps and the open areas of those mountains they used to grow in abundantly it's also called fox tail millet because its pinnacle is in the shape of tail of the fox so called fox tail millet it is very wonderful we have done testing for lung and lung related diseases and nerve and nerve related diseases so you have adhd kids you feed them this ambly for 6 weeks to 8 months lo and behold most of their attention deficit problems are getting corrected to the extent that we also have oils i will talk about it little later along with niger seed oil and coconut oil we feed this adhd kids now out of 100 kids we have treated 10 of them have actually passed 10th class with first class marks not that it is a big standard um, and that's not actually the test the test of it is that adhd kids do not have eye contact also but now 100 out of 100 are helping their mothers in the kitchen and taking care of themselves they didn't know how to shit they didn't know how to urinate they don't know that they are urinating such kind of kids are now going to the toilet themselves defecating urinating coming back cleaning themselves all these basic activities can be taught because they have now the consciousness about themselves so we could actually reverse many of this adhd problems in fact we had very serious cases of kids taking knives and needles torturing their parents day in and day out i mean this adhd comes in different forms some are violent some are dumb some are very mood swings all kinds of things happen you have seen hundreds of such kids hundreds and hundreds daily minimum of 10 15 kids come to me. come to my clinic and we have had the wonderful um, luck of treating many of them actually 90 out of 100 kids report being well just by this changing food because fox tail millet the fiber cleans up your nervous toxic materials that are coated in your body and the explanation is that every 7 years the body reinvents and rejuvenates and replenishes all the cells in the system including your deep inner brain cells are being replaced you know everyone knows after 3 months your 
hemoglobin gets recycled your skin cells even in 3 days so overall all the living cells in our body gets replaced and rejuvenated in 7 years that means dr kadar is not the same fellow 7 years back now each and every cell is new but i am still the same i have all the things that were there and that's the beauty of living things that it can just rejuvenate and redo everything without disturbing so it eliminates while doing that if i provide the right material to rebuild myself the neurons the nephrons whatever you call in you know, different names so the material being right and that's how actually the explanation of you becoming already even if you are 6 7 years so if i have to cure someone completely i need 7 years you understand but within 6 months to 2 years you will see all these peripheral diseases the so called cancer diabetes gangrene hiv all this nonsense for me they are all names for me they are all names you guys are dancing around here and there somewhere which is not at all required because the basic thing is here this is the correction point if you correct here then they will get corrected themselves so if you know your food then you have no health issues but then we are talking this this is the tablet this this is coming like that that is coming like this 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 is all these explanations but then basic problem is here so you correct here all these things will fall in place and that's what we did we went around doing this at various given conditions so this list that we have actually is irrelevant obesity weight gaining asthma tb liver tb this that all that but you see if you notice all the diseases have got only these five grains little millet that's because you have hormone imbalance little millet the fiber insoluble and soluble corrects this genitals the sperm problem the ovary problem the pcod problem all these are arising from hormone imbalance that's why we have got asking you to eat little millet for 3 days kodo millet for 3 days because it is through the blood everything is happening we want them to be clean i mean the problem is identified because of that being enhanced system problem so we correct that and then you see you have nervous disorder something else you have arthritis joints you see nerves being so brown top and fox type why nerves because if you see the nutritional list the thymine and niacin which actually clean up the nerve cells you have a lot more in there so finding this match we have figured out this table and we have given to so called autoimmune diseases csr is high and you cope on sneezing blah blah all this cold cough you dump antibiotics we don't need to dump anything just get this carrot juice amla juice beetroot juice mix and drink and then and some kashayams we need to add we have added already and this list is being updated once in 3 to 4 months based on our clinic clinical empirical findings codomilate fox tail millet like that we have got almost 60 diseased conditions listed in the table though it looks like 43 in the table somewhere each places you have two three diseases combined like constipation piles or rises increase like that so thyroid problem hypothyroid hyperthyroid no problem so with the combination of this decoctions and then oils oils i will talk to you in another few minutes 14 types of cancer but actually uterus ovarian cervical esophagus intestine and then you have stomach you have thyroid pancreatic kidney prostate so like that is actually almost the list is 20 different kinds of cancer but for me actually there is no need of this big tables if you see the decoctions that actually are keeping the cancerous condition is only three totally eight or nine decoctions are there So what it actually tells me is that once in a week, once in 
month we have this decoctions and these five grains as our food we are totally going to be cancer free the whole human race can be completely cancerous free if we only so this i find very amazing so many uh, of my friends say, oh you need to make patent you need to do that. i said so much amazing thing how can i put it in a dabba and start selling i said the best thing that one can do is to share it should be free so there is no handles to this everything is free on the net and most of my lectures are also loaded on youtube freely and many people have cut into pieces and then made them packages and many times in the earlier days they have made cds and started selling making money that's okay with me it doesn't matter what all i want is the information to go to nook and corner of all the planet so if and when the human race becomes little sane i hope they see my videos and then start following the food and the food patterns and one thing i can say for sure whoever starts the journey of millets they're going to find themselves being well in a matter of 6 weeks whatever disease you have you start feeling the good effect of eating this wonderful food and believe me i have not discovered them they have been there in ancient times in fact i call them ancient foods you know why i visited a tribal area in my state karnataka although i am from andhra i mean i'm born in andhra but i have spent all my life in my whole con- conscious life in karnataka i actually was speaking only in kannada for past 10 years i visited almost 1500 places in karnataka nook and corner of every district villages i used to speak only in kannada only the half late in the last 3 to 5 years i have been coming out of my state i used to go to andhra because that's where i come from in bor and then recently i had to go to punjab and then mumbai i mean it's, it's going on yeah oh so what was i doing there was some alzheimer's coming into my mind <laughs> yeah that's what the background is oils see the nerves are actually fat material the brain is made of fat so what is fat again let me ask you the question what is fat actually it is the base for the next generation you take any seed without fat it cannot germinate i'll give you a big example in its true sense big coconut where does coconut tree you where do you find it you find it in backwaters not complete ocean you know if you have only salt water you don't get that you get in delta regions where there is the sweet water and salt water in the complete ocean like indonesia and you don't get actually you get palm trees you you get a different kind of palm tree so the coconuts are there. so you see when the coconut falls it doesn't know when it will find again the soil to germinate so what it does is it loads the seed with lot of oil you see have lot of oil because it may find its shore in 3 months or 2 months or so so it has to live for long time so it makes it the oil and it keeps drying up and you see if the coconut complete dries up you cannot germinate so it is holding the life by consuming this is a concentrated energy so you take two spoons of oil actually you can live for a long time i mean the energy you can keep supplying glucose for a longer period because it is a compact 
carbon hydrogen carbon hydrogen so each bond can be burnt slowly and slowly so that is what is oil all about that means it is the platform in which the new generation new life comes in in fact i will give you one more example what fat actually means that there, you know siberia siberia you know there are some frogs that actually hibernate almost they are dead actually they don't move they don't do anything actually what is actually happening for months together they are like that when there is warm up when there is heat again coming when the sun falls it is the first flick is actually happening with that particular fat content of the heart there is a particular beautiful material there is specific for that particular amphibian so it preserves the life it's just working small tick 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 small so it is through fat life is actually generated so that means you have a sesame seed you want to get another plant but there is oil actually that's what it makes the germination so without oils you have no new life form coming at all including your sperm your ovum is actually fat content is there this is the story of oils that means oils are very important and actually that is the reason why your consciousness itself is controlled by this oil oils are very very important but then what have we done we have screwed that also up because of this diesel industry these guys produce if you produce 1 liter of diesel or petrol which is above octane you know what i am talking about I mean, no octane and above can be used as fuel below octane like a heptane hexane pentane butane all that mix is just a thin mineral oil transplant oil so this refinery industry started becoming big you know like this diesel and we are using lot of petrol and so you produce 1 liter of petrol or diesel you have to have minimum of 300 ml 400 ml this mineral oil coming out so you like it or not you are producing tons and tons and tons of it on daily basis actually this industry so what they did is okay oh these guys are using palm oil these guys are using coconut oil these guys are using mustard oil these guys are all this oil so they thought okay so i make little coloring agent and little flavoring agent and then i run campaign olive oil is good because you have made three more gas you do the six more gas you do oh my god this is that that is this these guys went on writing article after article in somewhere in 1980s 90s and they said coconut oil is very bad because there is cholesterol in it you know go groundnut oil is very aflatoxin in it so all these local oils are debunked and then made bad images it is just given and so you have to have olive oil refined oils sunflower oil so where is this oil coming from and finally mumbai alone i believe consumes billion liters of olive oil in a month i said okay let me calculate billion liters of olive oil how much seeds you need 1 liter of olive oil you need 3.8 kilos of olive seeds so 3.8 billion kilos of olive seeds so how many trees do you need to get this so i went and looked in tell you in such that's where you get this olive uh, in some little place so the whole planet cannot supply for mumbai olive oil needs but then the whole world is using olive oil you understand where it is coming from now ha ah, 1 kilo of olive oil flavor can transform this 10000 liters of mineral oils overnight into olive oil so you order 10000 liters they will get you a tanker in 3 days even if i order in my produtur where i was born it will come coconut oil no problem rice bran oil you know rice bran oil rice also needs some fat to produce its germination you know but then the percentage of it is if you press 
thousand kilos of this rice bran, you get 10 liters or 15 liters of oil. But then you order your oil agent, thousand liters of rice brown oil, you give. And this is what has been happening in the last 20 years. Any oil, any amount will be served. Because we have billions and billions and billions of liters of this mineral oil produced. They have to find way and means of pushing it. And they have found it. And that's what you are. So every day you samosa, I see all fellows are eating samosa. Huh? Bombay plus uh, oil coming out. No problem. Drink oil. But the real oil, if you actually eat samosa, your brains, your nerves, your neurons get cleaned up. The toxic materials get cleaned up. So if you really want your brain to be sharp, Niger seed oil. You drink two to three spoons on a daily basis on your empty stomach. Within three weeks, you will see you are mentally sharper. And that's what we did. We fed the ADHD kids every day for a week Niger seed oil and the real coconut oil. Lo and behold, all started falling. In fact, your hormone imbalance because the thyroid, they are also made of this fat content. We found thousands and thousands and thousands of thyroid patients completely becoming all right in a matter of three months to six months by just giving them little millet and then some decoctions and these two oils alternate weekly within three months. What does our medical industry, the tablet industry say? Thyroid problem sir, take this tablet, 50 mcg, 100 mcg, 150 mcg, how long sir? Is it a question to ask for me? BP tablet, how long? Life. Diabetes. Tablets for 4-5 years after that, insulin, how long? Life long. Rheumatic problem, how long? Life long. Is there any disease these guys have said you can stop the medicine? No. So isn't it proof enough for you that these guys are just selling tablets? They are not interested in curing any disease? With all due respect to all the doctors, have nothing against but have you not been reduced to this have you not asked yourself this question at least once a day oh once a year at least excuse me I am I am not being uh, you may think I am very aggressive no actually we as a common man pouring out the anguish It's you who are supposed to be protecting us. It's you who are supposed to be guiding us in the path of health. What's happening? These are the questions the common man is asking on the streets. Please don't mistake me. We need to respond to these things as a scientist, as a doctor, as an institution of higher learning or whatever knowledge bearers or whatever you call yourselves. It's high time we did something right. That's being the case. I started this campaign for the last 20 years. So we need to produce the oils in its true sense. And believe me, you don't need oils in this large quantities. You only need one or two spoons or three spoons. And if you become old and you become Alzheimer, you may need three more spoons. So a nutritionist clearly say, say till you grow up, till the age of 15 or so, you have these oils, wonderful oils and oil materials. In fact, you don't need to even give the oils to the kids. You can give the the sesame seeds, the groundnuts, the coconuts and mustard. Some things cannot be taken, so you make it into oil. So mustard oil is wonderful for 
correcting the hormone imbalance and uh, correcting the digestive process. In fact, you have a lot of digestion, you have bad smell in the mouth. You just have to take ses uh, not sesame seed, mustard seeds, take half spoon, just ash it on the ground and then collect it, put it in water, boil it for four minutes, filter it, sip after cooling it down, lukewarm, don't drink a hot coffee. This is the worst thing that a human being can do is drink things hot. Now, I'm not talking about hot drinks. I'm talking about coffee, tea and other things being hot. H-O-T, temperature. It should be lukewarm. So, even the decoctions that we are suggesting, don't drink hot coffee like that. You know, just cool it down. It's called lukewarm. In our language, Gorvetsa If you, you, you should be able to comfortably dip your finger. And that is the measure. So drink all your so-called hot drinks, not liquor. Let me be clear, very clear. Lukewarm. Be it, okay, you, you, you still want to drink coffee, drink lukewarm. And we have actually means and methods of you getting out of coffee addiction, drug addictions, liquor addictions. We have some decoctions. Uh, one of them is uh, Pongamia. So Pongamia decoction and Bilpatre, that is Egel decoction and then Tinospora, that is uh, Amrutabali. These three decoctions can get you out of your addictions. Like you are addicted to alcohol, you are addicted to nicotine, you are addicted to cocaine, you are addicted to caffeine. All these addictions of alkaloids can be actually de-addicted by continuous use of these wonderful uh, decoctions and top brown top millet. The fiber of brown top millet actually starts correcting your digestive canal. So that's where the everything happens. Your addictions happen through the nerves connected to your digestion and the brain. You know, your tummy automatically keeps your stomach does the dance because there is a connection. So all these things, triggers, responders, all these wonderful biochemical processes can be actually tinkered and regulated through the choicest decoctions and foods and that should be our goal to communicate the knowledge to the common man and that actually has happened already in our country many many local foods and local practices have been actually aimed at doing that. in fact the methi and buttermilk whenever you go out Say you are going out for 12, 15 hours, my grandmother used to say, Hey, come here, take fox style and let umbali with little bit of curds and then methi seeds. That protects us from getting into the infectious conditions. So like this, I have had the opportunity of visiting various places in India, local, tribal, and had wonderful time of meeting some elders and then sitting with them overnight, two, three nights, learning all these things and trying to grasp and internalize and make sense, the so-called scientific sense of it. And that work has resulted in, and we have actually got now a protocol of six to seven pages, which we will share, it is there already and Surya will explain to you that a feeding mother has to eat, a mother who is to be pregnant, you see, not to have ADHD kids, we have healthy babies and normal deliveries. But nowadays 78% are caesarean deliveries and then the normal deliveries have become abnormal now. So I mean the real normal deliveries that you really deliver the baby through your vagina. That's what I mean by normal delivery. So all these things can happen properly and healthily. We have had the opportunity to work out the details of many such diseased conditions of human race and we have found 
profound results and wonderful uh, feeling uh, has been uh, experienced by not only me, many of the volunteers who have come out uh, front and then started working and one among them was Surya and now we have almost 8 to 10 volunteers uh, doing a wonderful job in Mumbai and the three of or four of them are here, uh, Bali and uh, Archana. Mm. So I have talked to you about protein, I have talked to you about oils, I have talked to you about carbohydrate, I have talked to you about all the things that go into your mouth, but then I have not talked to you about one thing, that is the sweet. So you said don't eat sugar, then what do we eat? So he is uh, Surya and I will spend another five minutes about the sweetener of our lives, which is God and nature has provided us wonderful things that I will speak and then uh, Surya will uh, speak. And Meghna has come, actually she is also one, she is from Indore and uh, she has been very actively promoting uh, millets and in fact she is a wonderful cook. She also uh, does uh, cooking classes in Hindi, uh, not like Kichdi Hindi. Uh. <laughs> so, Please, you could actually use their uh, talents and knowledge and they have been uh, working uh, with me for more than one and a half, two years. So, a lot of knowledge has been already transferred to them and uh, they have got, uh, yeah, uh, actually right now I, as I was eating uh, lunch and uh, Professor Kannan was there with me, there were two beautiful plants. I actually shared the information with few of them and that's one, one is called fish style palm. And in fact, it's a rare plant. You don't see it anywhere. And I'm happy to see in IIT campus. So, I will show you one or two fellows that. And fishtail palm is one of the most beautiful plant because when it makes the inflorescence, the sap that rushes through is actually fructose through the phloem. You know what is phloem? In a plant we call xylem and phloem. It's a peculiar arrangement in these palm trees the coconut, the arachnid, the borassis that is uh, toddy palm, silver date palm, khazur palm, all these palmacy trees they are called. Actually they look like your palm when you have like this, that is called palmacy. Huh? These palmacy trees actually are designed by God in the areas where there is lot of water flow. Either it is in the coastal areas of oceans or in the backwaters or the running rivers. Why do they exist? Because God intends to see that the rivers do not go on spreading. You have along the things, these wonderful plants which actually sucks the water and throws it out. So the water pressure on the banks gets reduced. That's how you have these wonderful backwaters. You know, you keep seeing Year after year, the same place, the plants maintain that. Though there is water pressure coming, the pressure is released by this. They are like tubes, zoom, piping out the water in large quantities. In fact, one coconut tree actually pumps out in a matter of one hour, 280 liters, zoom. And that's how their structures are done. The xylem and family, very different format that is made in that. So with that advantage, when the flowers are, flowering season actually is between January and April. In fact, the first sweet that human is in is supposed to be, um, of course in north it is Bengal, in south there is a Telugu, uh, Andhra place. Yeah, this is your fish style palm. I think people who have some eye on the plants of IIT can identify. If you stand there on that, uh, which place did we eat our? Jalvihar, just stand there in the corridor, you see it straight in front of you. I was so excited because you have to go to Vishakapatnam Arakloya to see these kinds of plants. It's a beautiful plant and this is the best because it gives you minimum of 15 kilos of wood from one plant. So this is the flowering season, you actually just take a small knife and tap a small cut and then put a pot, mud pot. It will release the sap, which is completely a fructose. And if you just expose it to the sun, in two hours you will have your wonderful liquor called Kallu. 
So that's all the difference is. You know, it's the microbial process are wonderful. They can just make things good and bad in no time. You know, so you want this. Uh, this is called boracis tardy palm. This is tardy palm. Okay, that gives you approximately eight kilos or something like that. And so there is one more palm called silver date palm, which is Bengal sweet. You know, the Bengalis are known for it because those guys are blessed with this plant. It is not here. It is not there. It's there in their sundarbans and all the water logged wonderful uh, forest areas they have this wonderful silver date palm they are actually small fruits just to eat those fruits is your you should be blessed to eat those wonderful fruits so if you tap that yeah this is this is actually the, the palm tree the real palm indonesia you have this palm oil no that is that palm that yeah, date palm your khajur so different kinds of things are there but in india we have diversified places wonderful plants are there diversity is maximum in our place so you have three to four kinds of plants we can make good from in in tamil nadu we they use more of that boracis uh, this is uh, this is silver palm tree so small things this is in bengal wonderful sweet in fact when this stupid uh, invasion of uh, britishers came actually first thing they were uh attracted was the sweets of bengal the eastern india that's how this uh, sugar cane came to existence with their confectionery addiction of sugar the estate word actually came from this sugar estate actually sugar the sugar cane uh, estates and then the slavery everything started from sugar actually in the historical so they replaced the real sweet this is the real sweet because this is fructose when you heat that sap you get good there is completely a fructose 70 to 80% of it is fructose so when you eat fructose you are not flooding your blood with glucose still you have sweet it takes around 18 steps for fructose to become glucose in fact it doesn't go into that path at all it becomes something different actually so eating palm jaggery and it also has lot of minerals and other uh, wonderful things in fact in fact it also is very good it's actually called known as biological viagra if you eat you know, your sex instincts are aroused and all that kind of stuff i mean lot of good things are there um, so the real sweet we have forgotten and the stupid sweet we are eating the sugar which is actually very addictive and very dangerous so sugar with little oil is as bad as cocaine and that's what you guys are all eating in the form of ice cream and this and that. that's why you are addicted once you eat ice cream chocolate you keep wanting to eat it because you are addicted it's damaging your brains and everything in balance so please my sincere advice don't eat sugar don't touch milk so in my lectures i don't eat milk don't eat sugar don't eat egg don't eat meat don't eat rice don't eat what else we eat the sad story is that we have forgotten wonderful wonderful diversified food materials have been wiped out not only from the planet even from our memories by these corporate companies and that is the sad story i know you laugh but it is a very serious thing so we need to get back to this wonderful natural products and make our lives more beautiful and more meaning will to live on this planet because once you get back to this natural processes we can really stop this homicidal attitude of corporate world and we are living in an economic system economic model which is killing the planet itself because to make this rice this wheat this meat this eggs this sugar you know to kilo production of sugar takes 28000 liters of water so you are eating 1 kilo of sugar you have gulped 28000 liters of water now same 1 kilo of palm jaggery how much water it takes it takes no water zero and we till still today we have 180000 millions of these plants on this planet even today that means if we make good out of that policy 
we can supply not 7 billion people, almost 24 billion people we can give. Even if you continue to eat the way you are eating your sweets, which you are not supposed to actually. <laughs> In fact, we don't need that. You need only sweetener so that you can take some bitter decoctions or when something is needed. You understand my point? We still have in nature all wonderful things that you want to do. But be aware of what you are doing. Because you are not only killing your health, you are killing the planet. Just because you guys are all drinking coffee and tea in the morning, having churches and chais and coffees, millions of animals are dying in the Everest forest, in Western Ghats. You know, recently, just where I live, is the muddy area, just 60, 70 kilometers away, the mountains are moving because there are no trees to hold the rain and it is damaging the whole landscape of our Western Ghats. That's all because you guys are drinking coffee and tea, nothing else. So, what's the solution? You have to stop drinking coffee and tea and that is the only solution. There is no option for us. So if a scientist, if an environmentalist doesn't say this, he is not an environmentalist. We have to stop this brutal way of living. We have been very, very arrogant, aggressive and killing everything on this planet just for you to eat your stupid eggs, your stupid meat, your stupid sugar. Don't mistake me for this word, stupid. It is stupid, actually. It is stupid to eat these things because we are killing ourselves and the planet. Excuse me for my expressions. And in fact, I would want someone else to do better than me, actually. We are in that dire state of affairs. And no one is talking about it. And that's why I express the way I am expressing. We need to talk about it. And if higher institutions like IITs do not talk about it, who would? Eh? So all the professors actually by now should have been singing this song. They are not doing it. And that is my problem. Please do it. Tomorrow onwards at least. Thank you very much. Yeah, behind uh, and beyond all this, there is uh, my wife. Uh, my wife's name is Usha. And she just generally doesn't appear outside. And, you know, she is always behind. Uh, I don't even have her photo actually. Usha, we have. We have. When I decided to come back, 19. Or so I, yes. yeah. and I told my wife, she looked at me and you are a mad fellow, that's all. <laughs> so if anyone has any question to ask to sir, they can just point, raise your hand so I will come. Uh, sir, I am Mohan, uh, I am student in campus. So my question is that uh, you talk the importance of millet crops or like organic crops. So I think that the crops are chopping in the price of uh, crops, millet crops is growing up. And uh, is it difficult to buy for people or who are living the daily labors? Is it difficult to access that food? So how could be accessible that food to the this, uh, these people? And uh, what should be the which step can be taken from the state level or any, or any organization level to make them access? Yeah. This is my own general question for yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good question. But uh, we are at a time when um, the common man on the road, um, the poor laborers in the cities uh, especially, uh, it's going to be very difficult to start with. Um, but then, if they get the awareness, Actually, they are the first people who have the access because they are still connected to the villages and it, it is so easy to grow these grains. In fact, the brown top millet grows in two and a half months. 
in just 75 days you get the crop. So, in fact, this we have already done it uh, in the villages of Anantapuram. Actually, a lot of these laborers in the Hyderabad, after listening to my lectures, they have gone back to their villages and asked them to grow these things and we have provided the machines, small machines, very, very cheap, 2,000, 3,000. They are actually making the rice itself in their home. In fact, they are getting, so actually the real poor laborers of taxi fellows, these fellows, they have no problem actually because they directly go to their village connections and then they are growing because earlier it is difficult to grow because they do not know how to grow and there were no seeds left which we have provided almost all the villages of Karnataka and now Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So it's just a matter of, uh, no, the, the question is very serious one because the poor people cannot afford, that's true, because there is no crop that is being grown by farmers. Why are they not growing farmers? No one asked them to grow. If they were growing, if they are getting some money, they will grow. Now actually, it's a fantastic question because out of 100 acres, I'm going to answer you completely, not leave anything left. 20 acres is what any country in the world, the highest technologically advanced countries can only irrigate. Maximum is 20%. Maximum, including the Israel. So it's a small, small country, so whatever they do, our stupidity is we think it is as a model, but it is not a model for us. It is a small place. Whatever they do is good for only small places. So 20% of all our dams and all these irrigation projects, billions of dollars we are spending, crores of rupees we are spending, all that it can do is only irrigate 20% of land. So there is 80% of land is still left. So we have now chosen, the human race has chosen the food that is grown in this 20% as our food and that is going to be a biggest problem. So logically speaking, we need to get into the 80% which is lying free on the earth. Free. So four rains, what you can grow is this five minutes. Not even ragi per minute. They need 900 liters of water per kilo. These guys need only 200 to 300 liters of water per kilo. So, your question is very much right because now, because no one is producing, it looks like we cannot give. But then once this awareness starts and then once the farmers get to know, till now they were not able to produce because no one wanted to eat. But now that the value of it, that is the point, the value of the dry land farming has been completely negated by these companies. It is this 80% land which is, has been lying free and not doing anything because of the health and the goodness of these grains has brought us. So we have now forgotten 80% not doing anything because of these corporate companies concentrating on irrigation, these fertilizers and all that convincing us this is our food. So now if we just shift our focus, now the 80% farmers come into focus who are actually completely left high and dry by this government's policies, everything. A request for everyone till the time that my setup is done. Whosoever want to register for any of these programs can just make a registration over here. Or raise their hand, we will come to you. For the availability of the millet site, so basically until last year there are less number of farmers who are doing the farming and uh, all millets were available around 300 and 200 rupees per kg but now it has been reduced to around 100 to 150 rupees per kg per millet so it is like the it is the price is going down as the production is up then price will go down anyone have wanted to ask questions no, that, that, let me complete that question okay. uh, the answer is not complete yet uh, so uh, we in the name of corporate food culture, industrial food culture, we have actually forgotten the ecological food culture. So this is the opportunity for all of us to shift to 
the industrial food culture to ecological food culture. And that's what makes this wonderful grains, the shift, the transition very easy now, very easy now. It actually is going to solve our problems of villages because the money now gets transferred to the villages. So even if you are paying 100 or 200, even if it is high cost, the villagers that are producing are 60 percent. Even now, the dry farmers, dry land farmers in our country is 60 to 65 percent. So whatever produce they are going to produce is going to be their food. It was not their food till now because of our food practices. You understand this point? Very, very important point. So the producers are going to be consuming directly. So there is actually, it solves so many problems. The carbon footprint is going to be reduced very immensely because they produce, they eat and the remaining they sell. Here, other way around in industrial food culture, everything has to be produced, processed centrally, uh, distributed again coming to this. So the carbon footprint, even after production, just to distribute to people is itself is enormous. Actually, I have calculated it comes to 18 percent. Just the distribution of food itself is resulting in carbon footprint of 18 percent more. So all these issues are going to be solved if we decide this as our food. Because the local producers themselves are going to eat. 60 percent of the people are not needing any transportation. But now, the villagers are also eating rice and wheat. You see, what means is somewhere it is produced, somewhere it is going. All these problems are going to be solved. It is not just the demand and uh, supply business here. There are so many nuances and wonderful issues involved in this particular question. I am so happy you asked that question because this small hidden agendas are all going to be wiped out of these companies. See, this transportation of food from one place to the other is the biggest problem actually. The logistics and the centralization of food culture is a bad thing to happen. It should be local and regional so that the transportation is eliminated and that is also going to be taken care of. This question no one actually asked me. Uh, it is hidden in this question. So. All those issues are going to be solved and we have already seen the result in Anantapur. The villagers are producing and they are all actually, many of them are connected to this poor laborers of city dwellers. They are getting their food directly from their villages and it is only the middle class and higher rich fellows. Well, rich fellows get anyway because they can afford. It is only the middle class fellows who are in trouble who cannot produce nor buy. So it is for them we need to work out and NGOs and institutions and uh, all these things have to come into place and then we need to do. But once the supply is up, more number of farmers grow, the more food to distribute. So the example and the proof of it is already coming up in the last two, three years. We have actually, the brown top millet was 500 rupees, 700 rupees even in uh, our Karnataka because after I worked out the details and showed them the good effects, then people wanted more and more. And so people started growing. And it should, that is the last millet that I worked out in the order. Uh, so it's only recent introduction, last four years. So even in Karnataka, the cost was very high. But now a lot of farmers have grown and it has come to up almost. In fact, every millet was like that only. From 15 years, I have been seeing Koda was very high cost some seven, eight years back. Now, it's slowly now all five grains are coming to almost 150 to 200. And if the whole country joins, and it can join because everyone can, can grow. No one need to uh, go back on this. Every farmer who has three, four acres land, four rains and you grow. So the whole world can be fed if Indian dry land farmers grow we can feed and imagine the Africa gets into the game, you know, <laughs> they can feed five globes, no problem, so much land is there and that is what we call actually real sustainability of food security. Thank you. Actually, sir, uh, I am also one uh, rural part of Odisha, so earlier the tribal people or some the marginal people, 
they used to cultivate the millet cultivation on the foot of the hill. Absolutely. Okay, or, or forest land. Yes. Sir. Now, what happened in the area, few mining companies, they come and they occupied the land. land. Now, the people are unable to cultivate the millet crops. Yes. That is the situation. This is the uh, uh, cause of uh, the reducing of the millet crops. That is another cause of uh, degrading of uh, millet, millet, millet crops in the area. Actually, that is particular cause for your particular area, but overall in the world, the real cause is industrial food culture. So now in Karnataka, actually Karnataka is number one state all over the world to produce the millets because in the last 15 years we have been making these awareness sessions and now the farmers are growing, the people, Bangalore actually consumes a lot of millets. In fact, Bangalore alone uh, has uh, 38 lakhs of diabetic patients. So, if at least the 38 lakh diabetic patients eat also, we have a lot of demand. <laughs> Leave alone others who, who are still not getting this concept. So, even if we produce and give to these diabetic patients of India, they are also very high in number. So, we would actually have a good, good economy for all the farmers that are there in India. So, this is the added advantage once we start shifting. Uh, we get healthy as well as the farmers and the dry land farming and of course the best thing sir for your thing you should throw out those mining fellows and uh, occupy that land back. Yes sir, shoot your question. First of all it's my privilege to attend your seminar because I had seen your videos on YouTube and very much impressed. My wife found some videos and we really started following it. In amazing results. Thanks. Uh, so my question is how to recognize the millets are at the right level because I have heard that some are hulled and then huh. some are polished yeah, because yeah. we bought some millet from some uh, Pawai store yeah. and we were able to cook it in one hour. Yeah, so yes. we were surprised how... Yeah, I think they are machine uh, unpolished uh, ones. You see after, yeah, there is a particular method of maturing the grain and then subjecting it to machine or uh, mixy methods to get the right uh, grains. That is what we are actually been doing in the training sessions because everything is knowledge based which has to be trained and learned. So I have done that for the last 25 years I have been sincerely and with all passion working so I have gone to different uh, knowledgeable uh, old farmers and then spent hours, not hours, days, in fact sometimes months, learnt all these tricks and, and we are trying to give the information to all the people. And in Karnataka it has been uh, happening for the last 10 years. So now we actually invite few farmers from various places and then learn this technique so that you become the seeds of this wonderful knowledge of are transforming the farmers in your area. So we eagerly await uh, from farmers from various parts of India. Also, if possible, all over the world, we invite people. We are willing to uh, share our uh, knowledge, um, hand on experiences. Uh, we are we are doing that, and that's what is this two-day jungle kushi program is all about to make you uh, knowledgeable when to harvest, when to, I mean, you need to see things, you know. We, you, I cannot put photos and it's difficult. This agriculture is, you cannot have PowerPoint presentation and <laughs> transform you. Now you need to be there on the field, touch the soil and, you know, see the grain and things like that. And, yeah, we need to do that very efficiently for future generations and we are working at that. Thank you. Maybe I got all the information that in, uh, on your uh, website also. Yes. Uh, irrelevant question maybe. I feel that uh, there is some connection with the US, America and this uh, you know enlightenment that we get. Those who go to US and then they come and enli enlighten. No, so I was enlightened with, before. The story with you is the same. <laughs> so, right from Vivekananda it started. So, I feel that maybe what is the connection? Like uh, we get enlightenment after. Uh, People come from US. So, uh, but it was a very uh, great session. Uh, wonderful. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for our kind words. I think, uh, in the interest of a time, we would like to QA session end over here. Sir, we'll be around for another 10 15 minutes.
it. If you have any more questions, you can reach out to and him. And I have one more issue to clear. I didn't talk about water, which is the basis of our life, actually. And what is water, again, the real definition is actually, if you see the water cycle, water comes from the ocean, gets into clouds due to sun, of course, again. Then we have wonderful forests on the land and it rains. And again, forest, it runs through the forest, it runs through the open spaces and then collects a lot of wonderful minerals and its colors, its hues, everything is different in different places. Some river is looking green and some river looking black, some river looking brown. In Andhra, we have what is called Krishna River, which actually looks black when you are actually flying. That's the reason is the salts that it dissolves, the things that are there on the ground and the forest that it runs through, all these things add the wonderful qualities of for water. So, water has a wonderful property called TDS, totally dissolved salts. Huh? That has to be actually in balance with the cells. That, see, that is the wondrous thing, that if you have 100 to 200 TDS, which is actually is the salt concentration of our cells. So, when you drink water, you should not disturb the balance of the salts. So, salt should not go out of the cells or go into the cells. And that's how the running water and the surface water has the concentration of these salts. And that is the beauty of the running water. When the water runs, it also maintains the structure. What is structure after all? H2O, you know that? And you have what is called hydrogen bonding, you know? Hydrogen, again another. Like this is get structured. That means you have the alignment of oxygen and hydrogen and in between these spaces because of the delta positive and delta negative, you get these salts stuck and, and some so-called pesticides and all that also gets stuck and things like that. So, um, if the water is running, that kindic energy makes things happen. And that's how the water remains always, if it is flowing or falling from big uh, waterfalls, you know, they are all structured water. That is actually the structured water, when the water is flowing, flowing. flowing. So, you want to drink the water that is flowing, and that is actually the real water. But then what we do, we build the dams, and then we put this, we put that, and then the Hemamalni comes and says, drink our water, this filter, that filter all these nonsense things going on. Huh? But actually, you, if you drink this uh, water, filtered water, you are removing all the salts. What are you doing? The salts in your cells rush out because they have, that's what actually happens in the delta regions. The salt of the ocean wants to actually rush into the, the sweet water and that's how you create the potential of sodium and that's how you create the water running out. And that is the cycle. So this is the beauty of nature. What happens in the cells is actually happening there in the ocean. And it is the sodium and potassium that do the tricks, that potential, that electric potential of these movements of these salts in huge amounts creates this. So that means the structured water, you have all these wonderful things going on. So now what did we do? In the name of uh, selling filters and this and that technology, you have stagnated the water and made the water completely out of whack. So you drink RO water and many people, in fact, as I see even, as I told you, watch, the, you are drinking in plastic cups, bisleri um, water, this water, all the plastic nanoparticles you are consuming. So you really want not to drink this water in plastic cups, plastic filters, plastic. So, but we have only that water being available, even the pipes the water is coming is plastic nowadays. So, how do we get out of the problem? So, the best option we had was a technology which is ancient again. Copper with d orbitals, free d orbitals, transporting them into 4S, DS, that only with copper and silver you have that. In silver it is 4D and 5S, 
in copper it is 3d and 4s and the bandwidth of water structuring happens with this copper not with silver so you just take copper plate take 20 liters of your ro water ro water i don't like because there is no salts at all in that so don't drink ro water you can have distillery water that is collected from here and there see the tds is 100 to 200 but still you have problems it is not structured it has well, toxics this and that so this copper plate you keep in 20 liters of your water in a steel vessel not again in a plastic vessel put that and because of that free rotating electrons you get cleaned up and the water gets structured that is the first thing that happens in copper plate you can see that very clearly within two days you see the notice you notice by your tongue and feeling that the water treated with copper plate for six to eight hours again eight hours is what is required and that water you drink you cook you do everything with and uh, we have literature no our sadhus and santas if they get angry they take the water and you know, soak like that and they are happy or unhappy both you know? that is from kamandala of copper kamandalas and in fact in south in our uh, western gods there are temples where all over the pillars and top they have copper covering plates because when thousands of people come for the temple functions you have infections going on so in fact the movement of the electrons kills even viruses so the viruses are completely eliminated only through copper plate contact so even now even even last month that big function the thousands come so everyone comes and actually no one gets infections because the copper plate is there everyone touches that copper plate. even by touching being with copper in fact that is the reason why you have many kings uh, if they want to be felicitated you know they used to have not golden stuff in fact copper things they used to do it of course now with adambara it has shifted to if you use golden the gold thing is useless actually doesn't do anything to your body because there is copper your actually infections are not there uh, it's a physical method of avoiding the viruses and things like that and not only that it corrects you electrical discharges also the people who have fits and all that if they are actually we have seen that wearing this or touching this reduces their uh, intensity of all that so all these things are wonderful but we recommend everyone to have this copper plate put 20 liters of steel vessel this water and that water you use for cooking drinking and everything especially if their kids you even bathe them with that water only kids young kids and old people should in fact that has been habit in our villages that you have copper vessels in the bathroom to take bath you, that is the reason yeah this one aspect i forgot in my lecture thank you minute i will take yeah this is the plastic bottle i was talking <laughs> thank you sir for your time and effort for sharing this detailed knowledge with all of us i would also like to uh, say thank you to professor kanan and his entire team for giving this opportunity to all of us uh, also thanks to mr chakravarti sir for sharing yes. uh, the introduction part with us and last last but not the least each one of you and all my volunteers for making this happen thank you have a safe travel so when i travel i still get the plastic water so what i do is i have a copper plate in fact you know i was quite uh, apprehensive but my wife insisted that you know we must buy the plate with drum and buy the plate it's very tedious no? then you buy the plate by evening it becomes black then you know then you have to use put tamarind juice to clean lime lime with salt and it just takes you know, one minute actually just wipe the lime and the salt on the plate it becomes you know sparkling it becomes so beautiful Put back in the water next day morning to drink, and to be you know just to you know share with you the water is so tasty just that I just cannot drink the other water. <laughs> it is this doctor this like not one or two times useless, ten times useless of taste and feeling. The feeling is of course thanks to the doctor. We will now charge up, but but the you know thing is.